Good morning guys. Welcome to another video by Antique Serena. My name is Walter O'Neill. And in today's video, as you can see, I'm off to a car boot sale. Fully loaded up and ready to go. That means the time is 6 o'clock. As you can see, a late start today. I'm off to Gertley Gay. Um, as you can see, I'm also on my own. Um, let's see. I'm off buying and selling. <coughs> Obviously, you'll get to see what I buy, and I'll try and get some photographs of the car boot sale and snip them in and everything. You know, she doesn't like you filming a Catholic gear. So, I will take the odd photograph, or if I can, just a couple of seconds of footage sneakily and splice it in. And of course, I'll show you what I've bought. Now, the likelihood is I'm gonna be busy, so it'll either be at the end of the boot sale, or when I get home, you'll get to see what I've bought. Bit of a uh, vlog. Um, eBay's quieting down the last few days for me. I don't know if that's for everybody. Um, but at the same time, I haven't been actively listing on there. So, clearly, if you're not active listing regular, you don't continue with the new sales so um, tomorrow morning I shall be when I'm in the shop I shall be doing some listings it's absolutely glorious day out there guys we've been so waiting for this weather so that we can get um, working like this yesterday I had an entire collection of perfume bottles uh, come in everything from Clasone to glass um, porcelain so it was a really nice job lot and I'm gonna film them for you tonight um, it's a nice little group to be honest with you but 150 uh, perfume bottles for 60 pounds you can't argue with that it works out you know 30 40 pence each 50 pence each I don't know it's cheap whichever way you look at it it's cheap so yeah all in all um, everything's going okay I'm uh, slowly taking the stuff out of the shop that's on eBay because it's already up for sale and replacing it with fresh stock. So one day in the week I'm going to make a video on just filming the, shed, uh, the cabinets in the shop so you can see how it's looking. And i got to do a bit more cleaning up down there. It's awful hard keeping up with the uh, customers coming through the door and trying to keep the, the shelves looking fresh and clean and not cluttering it. The biggest ha uh, and hardest job I have is resisting overfilling it is so easy the temptation for me to just stack stuff unbelievable but that's not the look I want to go for so it's really hard to resist but I am managing so as I've said I can't empty the cabinets um, you know throughout the week when people are coming in because they, it's just either going to trip over something. There's no way to unload a cabinet to clean it and redo the shelf. So I tend to do them on weekends, but I'm going to have a go this week, see if I can uh, just do it a shelf at a time rather than a cabinet at a time. And if I have a quiet hour, I'll move on to that. Um, so that's where we're at. Shop's going uh, really well at the moment. I'm buying. Um, the stuff that's coming over the door is shockingly unbelievable. Buying really well. And as for uh, selling, it's going absolutely fine. Um, I wouldn't jump up and down and say I'm going to get rich, but at the same time, it's paying the bills, it's keeping, um, it's keeping in profit, to put it that way. So I'm certainly not going to mourn. And I'm very excited now to see what today brings in. Not that I'm short of stock. <laughs> yeah. In this job, you've got to keep buying while the weather's good because once the rain comes, the winter comes, you can't buy. Or if you can buy, it's expensive. So while you're buying on the boot sales for 50 pence and a pound, you need to keep it up. Um, I think that's about it for a minute, guys. Um, yeah. Can't think of anything else I wanted to add in there before we get there. I'm hoping I'm uh, one of the first in the queue. Oh, I haven't been up long. 
to get up that last fight, which is a lie on for me, so I don't know why I'm yawning. <laughs> anyway, I will see you soon, guys. Bye for now. Okay guys, stop shaking, there we go, um, been a long, long boiling sunny day, getting the aircon on a minute, I've got loads of stuff to show you, I've bought quite a few nice pieces, um, I'm going to show you these quickly before they go, because as you know my mum has these straight away, I've got Obi-Wan Kenobi I think, and Luke Skywalker I think is what they are. And they cost me six pounds for the two and they'll be gone in just a minute for a tenner each so i thought i'd show you those before i um give them to my mum and we're off it's been a really interesting day i've sold okay i haven't bought no jewelry though today shockingly no jewelry i've had some beautiful pieces, crystal and some collectibles, um, like the meerkats and things. Oh Christ, the field is bumpy as hell. Um, trying to think exactly what I've had. Oh, I did have one really good buy for two pounds, a giant uh, gobel um, cat. This thing got to be 12, 14 inches tall if not more and it was two pound and in beautiful condition. Well, I normally get £12 for little ones that big, and this is massive, so yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Super happy with that one, that was a good buy. Some old man just ran in front of my car with his walking stick, on a death wish, no doubt. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'll, um, I'll give you a look at everything later on, um, as I've said, once... Once I get home and I'm unpacked and everything, I'm not done now by any means. i got to go over to Abavan now, pick some uh, more stock up off a friend. It's been a long day, I've already been on the go since 6 and it's about half past 1. And in this heat, wow. Tell you what though, today I've sold well, but I haven't sold nothing expensive. That's been... Um, strange old day today if you know anything up to a 10 I've done really well on selling loads of that stuff but you know I always take a couple of lumpers 50 pound 100 pound to try and knock my day up to two or three hundred pound if I only sell one or two of them knocks my day up then from 100, 100 150 quid to maybe 300 pound um, and they didn't go today however a lot of the um, I'm not gonna call it rubbish things I don't want have gone so I'm really pleased with that. I've moved stock then, low-end stock that I don't want, that other people are happy with. Works for me. I've turned my money this morning now back, so I'm more than happy. So anyway, I'm gonna leave it there, guys. I'm off to my mum's for a cup of tea. A needed cup of tea. And I'll make a video later on so you can see what I've had. I, uh, I couldn't leave the stall to make a video on that, and they shoved me in the corner. I got here for six o'clock today and normally I'm at the pretty much the front of the queue and I'm on the first row when, when I get in. I'm normally about six cars, within the first ten cars anyway. I got here for six o'clock today and I must have been 30 cars back. They'd done two rows before I even got in there and then they put me in a corner which wasn't a brilliant spot but I done alright in the end. Pitch is awful important guys when uh, you're selling at car boot sales. You know, I like a, a regular spot to be on suit because I have regulars that know where I am and they come back and find me. However, pitch is very important. Try and have enough space, even if you've got to pay for extra, have the extra space to display your stall tidy and try and have a decent pitch. 
So anyway guys, I'll see you soon. Good morning guys. Um, I'm going to finish off the video I started yesterday. Um, we had a little chat on the way to the boot sale and that. Um, I did manage to take a couple of photographs on my mobile phone, but it was manic. Um, two massive fields of buy uh, for selling, uh, two fields for buyers, for parking. Believe it or not, for the amount of volume of cars that were there, the buying was very poor. Selling ended up alright, but I didn't sell nothing expensive either. Everything was sort of under a tenner. So it was a strange old day yesterday, not the normal day at all to be totally honest with you. Um, but I have had a few nice little pieces to show you. It's not all antique but it's all good enough decorative to be in the shop now. So I'm going to start off here with a large brass jardinia stand or table. And it has uh, well, a solid brass, pierced top. Um, these sort of masks on the corner and all the scroll work and the lion feet, lion paw feet. Uh, paid £3.50 for it guys. To be honest with you, it's about 4 kilos of brass. So, you know, at 2-3 quid a kilo, you know, I could double my money, treble my money on scrap if I wanted. But I'm going to put that on the shop. I'll tighten all the bolts up. I'll put it on the shop. I think that'll go for £20-25, no problem at all. You know, solid brass. Happy days with that. I'll have a look on, little look on eBay to see if there's any on there, but it's not that old. Um, it's probably 1960s, 70s-ish, something like that. So it's, you know, it's more decorative appeal than it is antique appeal. Then we move on to one of my better buys of the day. A large cat produced by Goble. This was two pound guys two whole pounds what can i say look at that beautiful face Meow. so we're gonna have a little look on that one we'll do some research on that one oh, and we got a few bits of art glass is it signed it's not signed um, just a little bit of art glass, could be made by a million people, um, to be honest with you it's not good enough to justify me doing the research on trying to find out who it is. It's all mottled and kind of raised on top, so it's almost as if um, this molten glass has been dripped on the top of the clear, if that makes sense, she was all lumpy, um, sliced base. It's a pretty piece, it came in for a pound and I sell decorative little glass vases like that for a tenner in the shop and they sell. This one here is a pound again and I don't have to do any work on this which is nice. Which is we have a studio glass vase in the form of a jack in a pulpit. Um, quite a very popular shape for these type of vases. Alum Bay Glass. What the hell is that? Oh, I had a stowaway. <laughs> oh, that is so cute. Oh, that's what the Sandra that is. Oh, a little stowaway. Say hi, guys. What are we going to name you? Patch. He looks like a patchwork kilt. Say hello to Patch. Oh. Right. So, uh, as I was saying, beautiful mottled glass again, but the nice thing about this, it has the paper label underneath. We'll have a little look how much they're selling for online, but again, £15, £20 pound in the shop, if, they, you know, if nothing else. Just on the decorative merit alone. Alright, I remember this. I have... An etched, acid etched, pure crystal globe. Now these always come on a glass base, a little stand to display them. Uh, but it didn't have the stand. Now I've paid a pound for it. Um, but I've got a little round gilt 
gold gilt base metal uh, Swarovski crystal base that I can sit it on to sell it so it'll still be okay saleable they're not fortunes but again another tenner Ten to one on my money and it's quirky interesting pieces that I know I can sell again was another pound we have a glass it's a pressed glass Scottish bagpipes player again sliced base so it's probably been mold blown and then they've polished it smooth rather than just pressed all the way through quite a nice little Scotty player and again he was a pound and I think you know I'm gonna look him up on eBay I don't think they're gonna be fortunes on eBay but again it's gonna be a tenner in the shop Now, a couple of days ago, I introduced you to Stuart Crystal and the pattern called Cascades. Now, I was corrected. These are fuchsias, not snowdrops. I do pay attention. Um, and I've had here, I think it's a perfume bottle. It's got to be a perfume bottle. By Stuart Crystal, Cascades. And that, again, was a pound. Now, we're going to have a look how much they are, because this pattern was pulling good money, if you recall. Um, if you watch that video and it's in lovely condition beautifully signed so you know nice once it's washed that's a really nice little item that's even if they're not pulling money online it's a 10 to 15 pound in the shop but I'm hoping that is going to be maybe closer to 30 but we will see guys fingers crossed Don't you love it when you don't need an ounce of common sense or an ounce of brain? This was a pound, sorry, two pounds, you can get the gear, and look what it says on the label. Actually does the work for you there. You know, if you can see that. Murano glass, it, and on the back there, Murano glass of Italy. And we have a necklace and the earring set. For two pounds, that's a pound for the earrings, pound for the necklace. What am I going to get? Ten to fifteen. No problem at all. It's Murano, guys. Murano glass jewellery. Fine. No problem at all. But we're going to do the research on these pieces anyway. I actually used it yesterday. That's how bad it was. You can see I'm literally now going through the stock I bought. I haven't even been opening it. I'm only now taking out the... Um... Oh, come on. I'm only now taking out the, um, you know, the sunscreen and that. Save the 50p public libraries. Right, so, um, I have another piece of glass, art glass, probably 1950s this time. Nice cased ruby colour. Cut base. Scandinavia maybe or Czech I think more Czech to be totally honest with you but uh, again it doesn't really matter decorative piece come in for two pounds and I'm gonna get ten to one once it's washed it's gonna be 20 quid of anybody's money but could be a bit more sorry cut out there could be a bit more I'm going to have a look and see if I can find out who's made this one it's got lovely pinched insides it's Far better quality than the uh, the other one. I'm not going to bother researching, so we'll see where we go with that one. This was stunning, guys, and I mean gorgeous. However, they got it frog, but the frog has got some chip in, and this has got a really nice, beautiful colour. I haven't tried it under UV yet, but I can tell you now this is going to glow. It was glowing in the sunlight just in the sunlight this was glowing so that is gonna sparkle beautiful once uh, I put a bit of black light under that and that's got to be an online sale I would think because if I can get that glowing up luminous luminous uh, green um, that's gonna go well now as I've said it come with this frog and I haven't decided yet whether to sell it with or without the frog because uh, without the frog is perfect with its original frog the frog has got some chip in, quite a bit of chip in. Um, chip there, chip there. 
chip there, chip there, but it's there. So I don't know what to do yet. If I sell that as a vase and don't mention the frog and just say it's a beautiful, you know, uranium um, Art Deco glass vase, no chips or cracks, it'll be oh, 30 quid. I put the frog in and say, the vase is beautiful, but the frog has got chips and cracks. People can go, oh, I don't want it now, the frog's damaged. But they'd buy it without the frog. So I haven't decided yet. The likelihood is that's going to end up in the bin. Or... If it does glow up in the dark, I might end up giving this to a certain uh, Richard just so you can play with your UV light. That's a better plan. Moving on swiftly now, guys. I have a, a selection of, I don't know, 1980s at the guess, Russian memorabilia medals and belt buckle and things. So we have the uh, Russian belt buckle. And a selection of medals. Now I gave ten pound, twelve pound, sorry, for the entire collection, nineteen forty-five to sixty-five on this one. Not as late as I was thinking, all of them. And they're not going to be fortunes, but I'll probably put it as a job lot in the shop. I'm going to look online first, obviously. I don't sell nothing now without doing a little look. Um, but I think it's six pieces, three pound a piece, you know, it's 18 quid. Uh, but I'm probably going to go in at probably 25 to 30 pound for the group. So that's quite a nice little group. Um, yeah, six pieces. If I said a fiver a piece, 30 quid. Doesn't sound expensive, does it? Yeah, you know, not for a shop. So that's where I'm probably going to be with those, you know, 10 into 30. It's good enough for me. I then had an Eddie Stobart distribution refrigerated truck sealed in a box with the plastic cellophane still over it. Perfect how you want to find it. Cost me £2 in Gethly Gay. I know that's 12 quid all day long. But I'm going to look online and see if there are any more. And the only bit of jewellery I bought yesterday, guys. 500 cars, one bit of jewellery. Shoot me. And it ain't even a good piece. <laughs> it is nice polished crystal with silver ends. Silver clasp and silver uh, ends. It was a pound... And it's going to go for a tenner, but you know what? It'll go on my £10 board, it will. But wow, was that disappointing. I'm not even excited about that. There was a couple of pieces of silver there. I literally saw two pieces. One silver and turquoise uh, necklace, but it was very, very fine. Um, had sort of an Indian look to it with the feather. And she went to £7. I offered her a fiver to put it on my £10 rail. She said no. I weren't paying 7 to put it on my £10 rail. I really weren't. So I left out there. And a gentleman had a 1977 silver ingot. Um, so probably an ounce of silver. Um, but I, I, to be honest with you, I don't think it was. I think it was just a 77 ingot. But I don't know whether they're all an ounce or whether they do different sizes. But it, it didn't feel an ounce anyway. And he wanted £20 just for the ingot itself. And I thought to myself, well, I'm not even going to sell it for more than that. 20 quid's about where I'm going to be asking for it. And I'll probably put it on a very light chain just so they can wear it. So I thought, that's not happening. And that's the only two bits of jewellery I saw and left. Um, I didn't get near any jewellery. It was shocking. I don't know if I told you the other day that uh, I bought a beautiful necklace from the charity shop. While I'm here, I'll show you that. Now, as a rule, I've told you I don't go in the charity shop and I don't um, buy from the sell in here. So, I bought this and I'll probably put it away. It is ruby and diamonds, guys, on 9 karat gold. It's £50 scrap value there. And they sold that to me for £20. They had it in the window, priced up at £20. And I know I've said I won't go in there buying and looking. But who in their right minds values jewellery, ruby, diamonds and all that 9 karat gold for £20. So, I made sure I bought it. 
So that's mine now. I'll keep that and put that away for a while. Um, finally, there is one other piece, guys, to show you. Um, is there any more in my bag? No, it's just the one more piece to show you. Now, I've said to you on many occasions, I don't like doing cameras. However, I went to my uh, friends yesterday, the gentleman, elderly gentleman I told you about, who sells me all the antiques, and I don't even look through them, I just take them. And he says to me, I've got a camera. And he said, he paid an absolute fortune for it, hundreds and hundreds of pounds when it came out. Um, and it's in mint condition, he said, I want 25 quid for it, and I thought, don't like cameras but okay I'll take it anyway so I'm gonna have a look what they sell for uh, now it comes in a carry case I don't think it's an original carry case because the makes different however we have a bear with me Ashia Pentax And you have a nice Pentax lens. And does it say the size? I don't know. Hmm. And this is a 35mm camera. It's not a digital camera, guys. This takes a film. Um, the old Kodak 35mm. Now, it comes with a few varieties and extras and things. It's got mounting plates and bases and things like that. Uh, it's in perfect working order, and I mean perfect working order. Really nice. So I had that, and a case, it's not the original case as I've told you, but I had a case, which is better than no case. But I also had this, which he bought with it. which is a uh, Hanimex lens. It's a large lens, this one, guys. Macro lens. Um, what can I say? Made in Japan. Uh, Hanimex, to be honest with you, I think this lens is going to be worth as much as the camera itself. So that's something we're going to do a little research on now. Do I know what I'm doing with cameras? I haven't got a foggiest idea. However, I do know enough to know these lenses are a lot of money. So, well anything made in Japan to be honest with you is a bit of money, but uh, that's where we're at with that. I'm going to look that up in a minute. Um, anything else now? Bear with me a second guys, I don't want to forget anything. You already saw the meerkats. Um, Mum didn't have them. She already had them. So they're now in the shop window ready to go today. Um, hopefully they'll go qu pretty quick. Do they have anything else? I'm trying to think. I think that's it, guys. However, when you look at the prices I paid for all the stuff, I didn't have no gold and silver that I love. However, there's going to be a seriously good earner off all of this. You know, turning every one of the one and two pounds into tens and twenties is going to really add up to decent money. Um, I'd a guess, you know, it's got to be three hundred pounds worth of stock, yeah. I'd a guess. So fingers crossed. When we do the research now, we'll see how we go. <laughs> Wish me luck. See you in a minute, guys. Okay guys, so um, we're at the cameras. Now as I've said to you, I don't really want to deal in cameras. Um, however, here we have the Pentax MZ50, which is what I've got, £75. Another one underneath, MZ50, £51. So, and they're both sold prices. So for the £25, I'm at least going to double my money on there. Um, whether I put it online or whether I uh, put it in the shop, I haven't decided yet. I'd probably put it in the shop for a week until I got time and then I'll bang him online. 
but either way it's going to be a decent price then we come across to the lens that Honeymax lens just the lens on his own Honeymax telepho telephoto macro zoom lens 35 pounds just for that one lens so again that was okay the Goble cat look at that they've put it down as Hummel but okay I didn't uh, don't know whether they were still stamping on Hummel or just Goble I think it's just the Goble mark on there um, it had the impress mark of the uh, 31011-30 so that's the exact cat I got there it is just there and they had £33.36 for it that's a sold price guys not uh, an asking price Did a search on this uh, Alum Bay and there we have a Jack in the Ball Pit exactly like the one I have there just a slightly different colour uh, £18 which was about what I said to you <clears throat> some of this stuff though as you can see pulls £30 £25 and £20 so it's not spectacular but it does steadily pull money so again if you see a label on that saying Alum Bay then it's worth 20 quid. All right, yeah. The Art Deco vase, guys. Now, I got this one just to show you. It's no doubt it's going to glow up. I uh, I knew it would glow up. This isn't mine. This is someone else's. So, they do glow. Uh, and there we have it. It is the Art Deco. That's what they look like before. That's what they look like under UV. And it is the 1930s Art Deco Uranium Glass Vase by Sowerby. And it is called Lily of the Valley. There it is again. And there it is on eBay. They've actually got the original plinth. Now I've got plenty of these plinths so I can marry a plinth up to it. No problem at all. They've got the frog in theirs. So I haven't decided yet whether to leave the frog in mine or not. £95.71 sold. However, guys, we then go from there to another one. Lily of the Valley. Or Lily Vase, whatever you want to call it. Lily Vase, sorry, they're calling it. With the frog, with the base, £22 bloody pound. Mm. No bloody consistency with eBay, I tell you. So what am I going to do with it? I still haven't decided. It's worth 30 quid in my opinion, £35. Pound. I may still take the frog out and just put 30 quid on the vase and sell the vase as is. I haven't decided. I'll no doubt decide over the next few days because I haven't put it out for sale yet. Oh, yeah, the globe. Now, this isn't as good as my globe. Um, mine's got all the countries and everything on it. This is just um, a globe. But I'm, I've pulled this one up to show you. See, they're always on like a crystal, square crystal base. And they do sell. People do like to have them on desks. Now, I've said around a tenner. They're £13 on eBay second hand. So, that's okay. There was no Scottish bagpiper or piper on eBay. But I did manage to find him on Google. And he was produced by Burns Crystal. Now, I have put him in the cabinet already. He's in one of the cabinets, yeah? And he's down as a Scottish Piper figure, six inches tall, Burns Crystal. And they're asking, I think, hang on. Yeah. Brand new, £24.99, guys. I, but that's boxed. I haven't got a box, and mine ain't brand new, so mine's a tenner. But that's alright for a quid. The Russian medals. Now... They go all the way up to stupid money, and I ain't even going to bother with that because we're just wasting our time. Um, but if you start down here, you see people grouping World War Two and post World War Two medals uh, together. Um, bear with me a second. We got to start getting down the price a bit. We've actually got that one in the group, I think. But, keep going. There's a group job lot. 
Um, but they all those medals, and they pull £35. So that's the type of thing we're looking on. I've got the six pieces. They got a little bit more. They had 35 online. I got six pieces. I'm going to ask 30 quid. No. Bear with me. Uh, trying to see which ones I've got and I've got somebody over there. Lo's got a massive collection for twenty nine ninety nine for thirty quid. So and that's fifteen Russian USSR medals. So, but then you've got three over there. Then for twenty seven, the prices are all over the place. It depends what people want. And to be honest with you, I don't know enough about these Russian medals, and I don't care. Um, out of curiosity, let me have a look. Russian. Belt, buckle, brass. Let's see how much the belt buckles are, because I didn't search a belt buckle. That's the belt buckle I have, I think. Let me just have a look. Yes, that's the belt buckle I have, and that's £25 on his own. So in all honesty, it's worth the group's worth 30 quid, no problem at all. And that's a sole price of £25, guys. Moving along. Oh yeah, the Murano glass. There we have a square Murano glass pendant necklace. Sold for £10. Have they got any more? Hang on, bear with me. Then we come over here and there's another with the earrings. Sold for £18.50. I'm still only going to put 12 or 14 quid on my set guys, but I don't care. At least we know I'm not overpriced. The meerkats. I thought I'd show you um, how much them that pair of meerkats is selling on eBay. And there you have it. £31, £30. It's three of them but they're for 30 But you get the point. There's two but they're sold prices. 30 and 31 So that's pretty fair to say. You know, 20, 20 quid for the pair isn't expensive. The only piece I can think of at the moment that I haven't included in the video was the Czech, Czechoslovakian or Scandinavian bars. However, I I do think that it's Czech more than Scandinavian having looked at it. Um, I had a little browse on e uh, eBay and Google and that to see if I could quickly find similar items or find the item. And it's gonna take proper sitting down and research. Um, but what I did see, it had more influence of Czechoslovakian or even Murano than it did of Scandinavian. So I'm pretty confident it's going to be more Czechoslovakian or even a Murano piece because I have seen a few people attributing them to Murano. Um, but everybody, let's be honest, everybody says if they don't know what a piece of glass is, oh, it's Murano glass, even if it ain't. So you can't take that for granted. Uh, I need uh, to find a site who knows what they're talking about. Not just people saying, oh, it's Murano glass because it's coloured glass. So that's the only one I haven't included in the uh, research part, I think, guys. And, of course, that model piece, I just didn't rate it high enough to do the research on there. There's going to be thousands and thousands of little art glass pieces around 5 or £10. It's just not worth my time involved in looking for that when I'm going to get a tenner for it, no matter who made it. Um, other than that, I think that is it. As you can see, there's going to be a good bit of profit on the uh, on the stock, the camera, you know, the camera and the big lens, 75 quid for the pay, happy enough. Um, that's a quick 50 quid profit for me, I'll be over the moon with that. Oh, I didn't research the Eddie Stobart truck either, uh, but I can tell you now, they're between 10 and, tw 10 and 15, 10 and 20 pound, no problem, I've sold so many of them. Um, I just, I'm stood being out, I'm looking at it and it's in the window and I forgot it, but it don't matter. Um, in fact, while you're on the thing, I'll just pull them up quickly for you now. You can have a quick look. Uh, yeah. Eddie Stepo Art Truck. Eddie Stobart Tracks. Let's go to sold. It's only prices. There we 
we go. Just giving you a little look. There's one, same size, that's a double trailer one. That's sold for just over 12 quid. But that's the sort of money they all sell for. Now bearing in mind, mine's mint, boxed, sealed. So 12 quid on it, it's absolutely fine. It's not gonna be the end of the world. It's absolutely fine, guys. Um, other than that, I don't think there's anything else really I wanted to show you in this video. I have had a huge, huge, huge selection of perfume bottles come in. Uh, everything from Stuart Crystal, Keith Ness Glass, Limoges Porcelain, Chinese Cloisonne, um, Egyptian style, thin Egyptian style glass with the spiraling tops and so forth. It's about 150 perfume bottles in total and they came in the other day for £60. Well I'm going to make a video on them this week and give you a really good look, close up look at all the perfume bottles before I bring them to the shop. Now what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to dedicate a shelf just to perfume bottles and they're going to range starting at a fiver and go all the way up to, I don't know, £15 at a rough guess, between 5 and £15. And when you consider they cost me £60 and there's 150 of them there at a fiver, do the math, 750 quid, for the ones that go for 10 or £15, happy days. I've looked online, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you all the details now, I'll put that in the video when I'm doing them. Um, but I'll get that video done now this week and you'll have a really good look, close up look. Some of them perfume bottles are absolutely stunning. And there's one there that may be Le Leak. Um, I'm sure, I, did, I haven't paid no attention to them, I just want to wrap them and get them all. Um, but I'm sure I've had a Le Leak perfume bottle before with the two birds slightly at an angle in frosted glass on the perfume bottle. I'm sure that's a Lalik pattern, so I'm going to have to check that one out. But I'm pretty confident that one's Lalik. Um, so there's some really good uh, perfume bottles there. And there's one that may be Chinese silver. I'm going to have to ask it, test it. But all in all, they come in for literally pennies a piece. Literally 20 pence, 30 pence a piece, wherever they worked out. But I'll do all that for you in the video for them. So look forward to that video, guys, because oh, what a collection. Anyway, uh, I think that's it. Don't think I want to add anything else in today's video, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. I know it's not my usual haul on a weekend. And to be honest with you, I was doing better in the rain. <laughs> but next week, I haven't decided yet. I'm, I'm in an R and Do I go to Sully and spend a fortune? Or do I go to Gethley Gay to buy the, no the normal stuff I buy and make a bit of money? Low costs, get home early. I'll see how I feel next week and see how the weather is. I'm in an R and didn't buy enough this week. Oh. I didn't buy enough, sorry. Didn't buy enough this weekend to justify not going to Sully. But at the same time, I'm buying it in privately as well, so it doesn't really matter. So it'll depend how I get on this week. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, I would appreciate a like and a share. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know you subscribed. I'll give you a thumbs up. You'll find me on eBay. I have a page, Antiques Arena Clearance. Make sure you add the word clearance at the end of my Antiques Arena. Uh, you'll find me on eBay, uh, Facebook, sorry. I have a page in a group, Antiques Arena. I have my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com. And you can find me in the shop. It's Antiques Arena, in, uh, 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Foxrod, 45, 3 Hotel Bravo. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.